yield the same result, that has to be scientific. And if not, why not? He, he, he didn't uh, uh, argue with that. And I said, we have a, a medium here in Sydney who, uh, who, uh, where we can scientifically prove what he's doing in, in the paranormal is correct. I have David Thompson here, as I've known him for the last nine years, mm. and it's, uh, his, uh, what he does is repeatable and it's objective, and we, we, we get the uh, same results over time and space, right? Mm. And in, in, in uh, experimental condition, now, well, now wh why, why do they not answer? Why, why are these scientists? No, no, no. Why well, don't they answer when when I, when I send them this uh, very important information? Because it's scientific; it, it cannot be refuted. Yeah. Well, as far as Dawkins goes, I kind of get the feeling he's basically he's a kind of mouthpiece for these people. He he talks about things he doesn't necessarily know about because he's a biologist. That's his uh, speciality. Yeah, uh, that's never. Okay. He, but he did a program called Enemies of Reason where he took like flags off paranormal research and things like that to prevent the program, but um, essentially he doesn't actually, he's never done, I don't think he actually knows much about it. I mean, he just, in a sense, that's he that's deals right. with it. He, do, he never, never replied to my questions with his enemies of reason. I said, you know, you talk about this, but you have not explained why growth takes place. Right? Why, where did gravity uh, came from? or come from, you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I asked some very interesting questions, and, and I knew he could not answer the, the, those questions. We, we call him, in the legal profession, we call him, the, his argument is the smorgasbord uh, argument. He only selects the argument that, that suits him, and anything that fundamentally could contradict him, <laughs> he just ignores them. But it doesn't mean that he's right. Absolutely. He's not. Technically, he's not. He has not replied to critical questions. Why, why does growth take place in, in plants and humans? Why is gravity? Why, why are laws? Uh, why are the planets don't, don't crash into each other? There are very special laws. Why? <laughs> I think he doesn't answer. Yeah. It's remarkable, isn't it? Right now, um, what I wanted to ask both of you, actually, because you, you are part of, you, at some point you must have both, you know, you're, are you both retired now? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, but you obviously have, like, professional <coughs> associations that you're members of, and you have to deal with peer review and things like that. Um, but I wanted to ask both of you, actually, what your fellow lawyers and psychologists think of you. I know when when I talk to uh, I know a uh, a couple of guys that are at the bar uh, Ray and his mates and all that uh, they, they well those two are uh, objective you say the evidence Victor what is the uh, evidence <laughs> so uh, I say this is the evidence it is repeatable it is objective I said that in a in a cross examination that would be tough to uh, to break you know I mean they're they're technical you know, they they're, they're good. Mm. There are quite a few lawyers around the world now who are working with us. Victor's got uh, there's a lawyer in America called Roberta Grimes who's uh, written a book about what happens when you die. She uh, is very active in the movement, and Victor's got several other legal friends throughout the world that oh, yeah. he corresponds with. Yeah. There's a lovely man in England, a lovely solicitor. Uh, what? It's Audrey Rose. Uh, Aubrey Rose. Aubrey Rose, yes, he's, he's a very senior solicitor in very London. Very senior, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's got, his first book has come out where he talked about the Leslie Flint tape. He went to sit with Leslie Flint and he recognised the voice of a judge on the tape. He knew this judge and he, he knew exactly who he was. Mm. And so he went along and sat with Leslie Flint and he talked to his deceased son. Now he has gone public with it. He's perfectly happy to talk about it. Um, he's had to keep very quiet about some of the other things that he was doing, like he was doing spiritual healing as, uh, at, at, as something that he developed um, through working with Leslie Flint. Yeah. But 
Yeah. He's about to publish um, another book where he goes public with all of this. Mm. Mm. That's really, really good. So it's just basically when they're confronted with the evidence, these lawyers, they understand that it is oh, the legal And, and oh, Wendy, yeah. look, what about psychologists, Wendy, and psychology? I mean, do you, how do you, what sort of response do you get from your, um, your well, sort of peers? It's quite interesting, uh, Ben, because there's two different sections in psychology. Those psychologists who are working with people, who are actually working with cases, are usually very, very open to the paranormal. Uh, quite a lot of psychologists these days are involved in uh, spirituality as well. Um, you've got the academic psychologists whose hands are tied. They're still very much caught up with the whole para the materialist paradigm. And so they, they can't really say things. As, as you probably know, the whole academic climate has, in terms of employment, people have got uh, a lot of very restricted employment options in the universities these days. Mm. But those who are working in private practice are actually finding that, that they're dealing with people's demands. And the interesting thing is that the psychiatrists are the ones who are very, very open. They're the ones who are doing things like past life regression because they find that it works. They're actually getting results with their clients. Well, that's, um, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, you bring up an important point there, Wendy, which is that <coughs> the, the people, they will often hear, you often hear that, well, the evidence isn't there, the science doesn't indicate this is real, but then, of course, scientists have rent to pay as well. And they, they have, they, 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 they don't want to lose their jobs any more than anyone else does. And if there is a, if there is a kind of climate of, of um, a certain, a climate of fear related to a certain way of seeing the world, and that's they have to choose. Sorry. Uh, ben, I've, and Wendy will tell you, I, I received uh, email from scientists. You know, some, well, two or three of them are big time scientists who uh, uh, emailed, me, uh, emailed me and said that they agree with uh, what, I, <laughs> what I said uh, about the, the afterlife. But he said, look, they said, look, uh, don't mention that I contacted you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it quiet. And one of them is a big scientist. You know, is very, very well known. Oh yeah, because so you just oh, yeah. don't mention my name, whatever you say. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, yes. yes. That's uh, yeah. That is uh, that's, uh, really. I mean, you've got to ask the question that in that kind of academic environment, can yes. real evidence ever be truly addressed? Because if it deviates from a certain mindset. Um, mm. The person addressing it could well pay for it with their career. Yeah. Well, there are only very, very few small institutes which are actually researching this information, as you probably know. The Winbridge Institute, they're, fanta they're doing fantastic research in mediumship, but they had to go on their own, and they've, you know, they're running very, very low on funding. They're just h hardly making it. And uh, the University of Virginia, they've got a very, very good section, but that was uh, a bequest that was left to them. So on the whole, though, there are very, very few academic institutions researching this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a yeah, but uh, we, we met uh, Gary Schwartz, uh, Professor Gary Schwartz, about uh, four weeks ago in uh, Arizona, and he he's doing this full time. Uh, and, Mm. He's one of the he's, um, he's doing well. Oh yeah, he's a fascinating chap. I mean, I we a few a couple of months ago we had Paul Davis on the program, and listeners, oh, yeah. listeners, if you go to the uh, podcast list and scroll down, you will see my interview with Paul Davis. He um yeah. he actually produced a film called the the um the Afterlife Experiment, where he um oh yes, yeah. where Professor Schwartz actually appears in that, and um, yeah. he talks. Yes, we, we met Paul Davis in Arizona quite recently. Oh yeah. Oh, apologies, 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 Paul. It's the Life After Death Project. Apologies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Title of the film. Um, so that's, um, but he's, um, he's actually been insulted badly by various people, including James Randi, who's called him gullible Gary in his usual patronizing and demeaning. Uh, but, you know, ben, you can't be, you can't take the idiot seriously, you know. I mean, they, they use the, the, the names and labels just 
to to uh, serve their own calls. You know, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I said to Randy, I said, look, uh, you said you you were going to take me on, and you you didn't. And I and I said, it's two week, uh, but one week before that, I I uh, I got emails from senior lawyers from from America, and asking what the applicant had to do. To, to, to get him a million dollars. And I, I, I sent them all the information. Two weeks later, they, they uh, emailed back. They said, well, look, if you can do this, you can prove this, nobody on earth can will be able to beat it. Yeah, that's how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, really is in, in, it really is incredible. It's very, very sad that this happens. I mean, in your, in your book, you, you mention a lot of the people who've been involved in this, including very and some very, very famous scientists who are famous in other areas, like Sir William Crookes. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And everything that he's done. Yeah, yeah. on page uh, six and seven, I have lots and lots of uh, names of scientists. Uh, uh, Dr. Morris Netherton, and uh, you have uh, Dr. Carlos Otis, and uh, you have uh, you have Constantine Rado, Dr. Kenneth Ring, Dr. Barbara Rommel, and... and uh, Dr. Ian Stevenson, Dr. Claude Wonson, uh, Professor Jan van der Sand, and it goes on and on and on and on. These are all people who said we we examined the evidence, and after we examined the evidence, we we uh, we agree that there, there is an, an an afterlife. But after only after they uh, examine the evidence, and this is what I I uh, asked. Uh, uh, Richard Dawkins, I said, um, what aspect of the evidence you uh, studied and you didn't agree with? He didn't answer. You know, he didn't answer. Yeah. Well, as I explained, Richard Dawkins is essentially a media figure now. He's, um, he's kind of a, he's a, there's a guy called Professor Brian Cox, in, who's now very similar. He, I know he recently did a tour of Australia. They take these people who they think are very photogenic and very, very articulate, and they, and they, yeah, the, yeah. The, so basically, he's more kind of, more kind of, he's a character more related to entertainment than actual science. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, there's one thing in common with all the Wisemans and Blackmores and and uh, Dawkins and and uh, uh, Stephen Stephen Hawking and all that. One thing they have in common, only one thing. They have not been able to rebut the, the, the work that, that I did. No, no one has been able to show why the, the uh, evidence I presented uh, it can, cannot be right. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, Victor, in, in your book, and of course, generally, you, as of course you are a, a lawyer, um, that's your yeah. profession, um, you use a lot of legal terminology, you talk about your opening statement <coughs> um, and your oh, yeah. case, your case for the afterlife. Um, yeah. has there, have you ever thought about setting up a kind of citizen hearing related to this subject. Um, in, I mean, I'm sure you couldn't really take people to court, literally, in the legal system, but have you ever thought about um, putting up a kind of um, common law or proxy court and <laughs> getting <laughs> someone to come and say, that would be about, I'd love to see that. That would, be, that would be lots of fun. As a matter of fact, I contacted the, the, uh, the, the barrister for uh, the Australian skeptics, and he said, you know, in confidence, he said, uh, well, you know, you have lots of things that are, are very impressive, Victor. <laughs> I said, uh, among other things, I was... Victor, hello? Hello, can you hear me? Um, so, yeah, I mean, this would be wonderful, Victor. I mean, like, um, did you say you, you managed to you contact Professor Schwartz about this? <laughs> and we, we talked about this. I said, well, next time, perhaps, uh, or in the future, we'll, if we can arrange for a, a, an informed skeptic to, to be cross-examined, I would love to get R Richard Dawkins, mm -hmm. and to, to, he, he, he can bring his team, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring our team. And uh, well, we'll, if he agrees to be cross-examined, I said, that would be quite a show. It would be great. I mean, you could... Um you could get together maybe an ex-judge and some ex and um, some more officials who are sort of like former yeah. judges and officials and yeah. ask them to to uh, and come on board. And you can hold a kind of um, you could hold your own kind of common law um, and sort of like yeah, the thing is what's extremely important 
in the legal process is cross-examination because the witness has to answer the question. At the moment, these guys don't want to answer the, the, these questions. But under uh, cross-examination, they have to answer the question. If I ask Richard Dawkins, did you read Sir Oliver Lodge's uh, book where, where he where he investigated the afterlife, and he agreed that there is an afterlife. Did yeah. you read that book? Yes or no? Yeah. Because then uh, the, what follows with that would be, of course, of course, if he says, uh, I, I don't agree with it, then uh, what aspect of the evidence you don't agree with? Exactly. This is, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, what you, if, if you hold this uh, proxy court and um, the skeptics just refuse to turn up, then you yeah. feel like Troyden in absentia. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. then that would be a great, that would be a great statement to make. You say, look, we had a hearing, we had our yeah. own, we organised our own private hearing, the sceptics were invited to bring their team along to present their evidence fairly, and they, yes. they declined. Oh, they, they will decline. I can tell you now, Ben, I can tell they, they will be, they will decline because they will not allow themselves to be cross-examined because they'll know I'll crucify them. <laughs> yeah. And I'll show them with absolute certainty, absolute certainty, that they're wrong in their thinking, in their logic. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Well, if this ever happens, I hope you'll film it and stream it live because I'll, 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 I'll be glued to that. I really will. <laughs> of course. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, in terms of the actual evidence, I mean, this is, uh, I just want to go into a, a couple of, um, we're going to have to, um, we've got a few more, we've got some time left to go, but I mean, I think we could actually, if you and Wendy agree, we could make this maybe a two-part radio show, and I could maybe get back to you in a couple of days. And yeah, sure. That's because there's so much we can go into. Um, but so the first thing I want to talk to you about is, um, because this is relevant, because I've got a friend called Don Phillips, who's been, in, who's been interviewed on this program about three times. And oh, yeah is a researcher into electronic voice phenomena. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure he'll be very interested to hear your views on that, because, I mean, we should yeah. maybe go into that. Because, of course, according to the skeptic, and I've, I've interviewed Tristan Swale, who is a, a well-known skeptic in this country, and yeah. um, we talked about electronic voice phenomena. Now, um, I'd, I'd love to know your, how you feel about it, too. Yeah. Well, one has to be very careful, because um, one has to investigate the very best, N not those who are perhaps uh, have and have, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I'm no. saying that, uh, that uh, the EVP, as we call it, uh, depends a great deal on, on, the, on the person who runs it, because we found, I found, that the more uh, ectoplasm the person has who runs it, the, the, the better the voice and we we we, we get uh, uh, what is it uh, the the true the quality know, the, of the voice the quality of the voice will be really 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 good when it when the uh, person who runs it as I said has has more ectoplasm because this is very important. People ask me, well, why is it that uh, 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 some people have come uh, uh, like the Bachi phone calls. Like the, the Bachi phone, uh, phone calls are, are, are quite good. Oh, they're, they're amazing. And they're amazing. The, the, uh, what's the girl from... Uh, but Sonia Rinaldi, Sonia Rinaldi. Is, is probably the leading person. What I like about Sonia Rinaldi's work, then, is that she's working with a university and it's all being tested, it's all being validated as she goes. Yeah. But what Sonia Rinaldi is doing, I don't know if you're aware of this, is that she is getting, uh, she's done more than 200 of these where the uh, grieving mother records uh, questions on tape and leaving a space for answers. And the child of the mother comes through and re uh, records the answers in those spaces. Now those, those, tests, those have, uh, tapes have been thoroughly tested by the University of Sao Paulo, and uh, they're the real thing. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Okay. So, so the, when the, you ask a question, you know, what, what my view is, you, the very best, I, I, I support the, the uh, work done by, by Bati, for example, mm -hmm. by those, in, uh, 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 Dr. Annabella Cordozo 
uh, uh, she's also a very, very good one. Uh, there, there is uh, those in those people in uh, where uh, are they? Tom and Lisa Butler. There's Tom and Lisa Butler in, in the U.S. And uh, who else uh, we know of? Uh, is it, I can't remember. Is, who's, the, who's the man who's in the Skull Experiment film? The Italian man. He's Bacci. That's Bacci. Bacci. Yeah, yeah that was. That was he, he, that, that was amazing. That that was. He he's using a uh, radio that's not even connected. It's like um, unbelievable what he he has been getting. But it, he's the only one who can do that with with his system. But he's we've got scientific reports um, by you know top scientists who've gone down there and investigated Bachi, and they say it's absolutely the real deal. We really think that. Um, ITC instrumental transcommunication is going to be the real breakthrough. We're expecting in the next 20 years to have ITC producing fantastic proof of the afterlife, mm -hmm. um, irrespective of medium. I mean, we were getting it. We were getting some wonderful stuff back in the 90s uh, with the uh, the work with the Luxembourg people. That was really amazing. And then. The contact field was broken. As you, you probably heard about that, what Mark Macy was. Uh, Mark Macy talked about that, about the, the damage that comes about in the contact field when people become um, uh, divisive and and uh, uh, fighting each other. Yeah, that yeah. stops the message coming through. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I regularly go to a spiritualist church, and they talk about this. They talk yeah, about yeah. so much. So even the even the the controlled uh, experiments on EVP uh, by those who knew what what they were doing in in, in my book uh, on EVP, uh, I, I have the report by Dr. Colin, uh, Dr. Peter uh, Bander, uh, who was fairly skeptic. But when he, when they put the uh, uh, the tape on and uh, uh, played the tape back, he could hear the voice of, of his mother. And, and, that, and that shocked him, really shocked him. And, and, and uh, nobody could say, uh, uh, he himself said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. No, that and, and the Pi experiment, do you remember those? They were absolutely amazing. They had a group of experts in a soundproof room. And totally shielded, they had all kinds of people there. They even had um, delegates from the Catholic Church, and they were getting all of these voices coming through. Yeah. Um, it was absolutely amazing. It's yeah. still probably one of the best experiments that we have in EVP. Um, but you know that uh, Ben, uh, I, I think though what's going to happen, uh, something that will re revolutionise this all is is uh, when uh, ITC becomes perfected. Uh, I think that's going to shock the whole world. It, it will shock the churches and uh, everybody else because at the moment there are those uh, who can get an I image on the screen. Yeah, ITC, we should call it just uh, to, to mention the listeners. It's instrumental transcommunication, which is, it's like EVP, except you can get pictures on screens as well as voices. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, now uh, uh, Sonia R uh, Rinaldi in, in Brazil gets a few good pictures. Mm. Um, what's the guy from uh, in, in the US? The Mark Macy uh, has done extremely well. There were a couple of them in uh, in Europe uh, who did it extremely well. But the gist of it is that uh, when they refine it, and they're, when they're they're able to get crossed over loved ones to appear on the screen and able to answer our question, mm. that would be something spectacular. Definitely. I mean, this is uh, this is um, what I want to. When I want to get you back on again for the second part of this interview, I'd uh, yeah. I'd love to talk more about physical mediumship as well. But uh, yeah. I think this this the EVP and the ITC seems to be the the most promising area. I mean, John Phillips, who's uh, I mentioned, is a British researcher who um, yeah. actually does field uh, EVP research. He actually visits haunted locations, and uh, yeah. I, I went along with him to a pub actually in. Um, in Leicestershire, the place um, um, oh, yeah. in Leicestershire, where um, there's this pub called the old, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but um, you can distinctly hear the sound of a, ch a child's voice yeah. on the tape. Oh, right. and, uh, now he's apparently he's going to he's going to try and repeat 
the experiment you talked about, Wendy, with uh, Mark Macy. He's going to try and repeat right. that experiment. So, yeah. uh, I mean, the biggest critics, I mean, Tristan Swale talked about this, and I had a discussion with him about this. Um, the biggest critics of Skeptic, the biggest um, case they have is they say that EVP is actually not really a voice. It's actually a, it's a, a random, it's a random noise on the tape, which is caused by the, sometimes by the auto gain control on, on electronic uh, equipment, or <coughs> it actually, the, the recorder can actually accidentally act as an aerial and pick up radio noise from the... Um, no, no, can can I come in on this one? Because the, the sure. report the report I have in my book shows that the the uh, venue of the E V P they they uh, uh what they This is what's in the Pi experiment. Yeah. They they specifically shielded it from they, any yep. external it, it it was impossible for external signals to, to, to come through. So the the skeptics cannot raise that uh, objection at all. Yeah, so this is very important. Um, I'm done. If Tristan's listening, I should, we did go into this, but um, the researchers in the EDP are now controlling for the very, very criticism that the skeptics are making. Yeah, and yeah. This is very important. Don, you know what, Don, Don Phillips, actually, I mean, I love you. You, you, you have a great conversation with him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, um, he's, I'll let you know exactly what he's up to when, when he does it, but he's planning to, he's learning to scuba dive at the moment. All right. So, we are, Ben, we are, we are scuba, divers, uh, scuba divers ourselves, you know. <laughs> oh, right. You, you can actually do this as well because he's planning to get an, a, an EVP signal from 80 feet underwater. All oh, right. Wow, that would be down interesting. To, he's probably dive down. He hopes to get down to 80 feet if he can. All oh, right. He's a certain distance underwater and get an EVP yeah. um, which, of course, ought to be impossible because radio waves can't penetrate the water. That's right, yeah. Mm. But the thing is, for me, with voices from the other side, is when uh, we, uh, when my sister came through, and she became as solid as I am, as you are, right? She talked to me, and we uh, about things that that we talked about before she she, she crossed over. This is in mm. physical mediumship. Of yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, her voice compared to the voice she had before she crossed over, would, it was a perfect match. It was exactly her voice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we, use, if we use a electronic an instrument to m m measure it, they'd get a c correlation of one. Exactly. It's, it's and, and, you know, uh, uh, and, and perhaps the EVP, some, some expert in the EVP, could, could get one to, uh, where he can compare voices before and after, that would be terrific. Yeah, this, this is just this was just this is the kind of search that really needs to be done because unfortunately, because of the the skeptics and, and what they the skeptic movement, this this research is it, it's not where it should be really because we had this golden age in the nineteenth century and really yeah. by now it should, we should be really kind of, I get the feeling it's kind of several decades behind where it ought to be in various. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you on that one. Ben. Oh yeah, but the thing is, you know, let, let's not let's not uh, accept everything the skeptics say because they they raise a, a, a lot of an invalid uh, objection. Uh, I mean, the, the the objections they raise are some of them are so stupid and so silly. You know, just, just because the skeptic says I, I, I don't believe it, well, I'm sorry, but I say to them, you'll have to show. Where, when, how, and why? Why you don't accept it? You just don't say no. I don't accept it. You, you, you have to explain why. And I'm more than happy to give you space on in my weekly report to, you know, to 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 tell the whole world why you don't accept the the, the evidence. Well, that is the scientific method, isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah. um, this is what bugs me about them. They talk about science, 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 and evidence, and then it's almost like they're deluding themselves. I think some of them actually believe their own. They're, they're actually their own sort of flannel without realizing that they're being hypo hypocritical. So, now, um, Victor and Wendy, and we we're going to have to leave it there for now, but I mean, there's so much more we can talk about. I want to of course. I want to do, do a lot about physical mediumship with you. I want to talk yes. about um, the recent uh, Sally Morgan scandal, and I want to talk to you about why. I mean, why, why it has this situation arisen where you have all these detractors. But we don't have time now because we've got only okay. an hour in the can, which is great. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a great program. But what I'm hoping okay. to bring you back, but before we go, just uh, let us know um, 
you have a there's a there's a website you have of course um and so uh, let us know what that is so people can find out more about you okay thanks ben it's uh, www.victorzamit z a m m i t dot com that's uh, victorzamit.com that's got all the details of the book and the free friday afterlife report we particularly like people to sign up for that report they get that every week and it keeps people up to date with the latest developments. We have interviews, we have videos, we have all sorts of interesting things there and uh, book reviews. People get to know really what is happening. And also, I explain why the skeptics are wrong. <laughs> Good, yeah. Don't be too upset about the skeptics, Ben. I think the afterlife is giving people direct experiences. These days, yeah. These days, more and more people are having their own direct experiences, and they say, "I don't care what the skeptics say. I know or what I saw." Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't care. I've got some friends who are skeptics. I don't have them. As long as they're polite and well behaved, I don't mind them at all. But the book, is <laughs> <laughs> the book is entitled yeah, hey. "A Lawyer Presents the Case for the Afterlife." No, the case. evidence for the afterlife. That, oh. the, the case for the afterlife was what? an earlier book. Oh, that's that the one was, I've got. Well, that's the earlier one. The oh. new one is the lawyer presents the evidence for the afterlife, and that's on Amazon.com. Oh, I see it, yes, the lawyer presents the evidence. I see it on yeah. your website now. Yeah, obviously I've got, to, I've got to catch up. I've been reading your older book. But, yeah, uh, that was the first one that we put up, uh, but we've, we've developed it a lot since then. Right, that is a lawyer presents the evidence for the afterlife by Victor and Wendy Zamet. What happens when we die? And I think that's a big, that's probably a question that every person has asked at some point, and I'm, and I get you back oh, to yeah. one of them. I want to explore that in more detail, actually. I want to actually okay. talk yeah, maybe sure. philosophically about you, about, about this whole issue, about this question, what happens when you die and things like that. But yeah. for now, mm. Victor and Wendy Zamet, I want to thank you very much for being guests on the Hapanwo Show on Critical Mass Radio, and we'll talk again soon. Okay. All right, thank you, Ben. Yeah, good to talk to you, Ben. Yeah.